Hey, LeBron, the, the NBA TV cameras picked up the little exchange you had with Jabari Smith Jr. And then I saw like a, a post-game photo with his dad and, you know, him being on the Kings roster your, in the first game. And then you played against him three times your second year. Is, is there context you can give us just to you think about stuff like that? And then you're, you know, you're putting 48 on uh, in a game like this and being matched up with Jabari Jr. for much of the game? Um, uh, one, it made me, it made me feel extremely old. Uh, when Junior uh, told me that, I think he even said that, like probably feel old or some something in that context. But um, like I said, um, post game, um, I've just been extremely blessed and um, and um, to be able to play this game and be able to touch multiple generations. Um, that's not the only. I mean, Kenny Martin Junior was out on the court tonight as well. I played against his dad, uh, Gary Trent, uh, senior. I played in, obviously his son now in Toronto. Um, so um, you know, it's just. Um, now, Gary Payton and his son. Um, so, um, you know, it's just a unique thing that I, I've been able to uh, withstand uh, the test of time or as long as I've been playing to be able to compete now versus, um, you know, father and, and, and son uh, combinations. You know, same as what Brady's doing. I mean, you look at, like, Shanti Samuels and, you know, now his son's playing and Patrick Sertan, he played against his dad and now he's playing against his son, you know, so... Just trying to keep up with the Bradys, I guess, not the Joneses. And, and then, kind of along those lines, you know, with with Bronny being very close in age, right, to Jabari, is there a, a different kind of way that you can connect or understand? Uh, just thinking about your relationship with with your son and yeah, for that sure. generation. Oh, absolutely, um, I can connect very easily. You know, having an 18 year old son, you know, in my house, and having a 19 year old teammate sit right, you know, next to me at the practice facility, you know, at Max. So. Um, I, I can relate and, uh, and understand uh, both sides of the spectrum because I'm around it on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, uh, <coughs> one about tonight and one about um, your tweet earlier. Uh, tonight, you guys set a franchise record for only two turnovers in a game. Just you, You've been playing for so long. How, how rare and is that? And, and what does that say about uh, your, your team connection tonight? Uh, it's very rare. And, um, you know, as a... As a you know, you you always as a ball club want to kind of play in a, like the you want to kind of be in the 11 to 13 range if you can. You know, that's kind of the range you want to be in where taking care of the ball. You feel like if you're in 11 to 13 range, give yourself an opportunity to score, give yourself an opportunity to get shots up at the rim, and not allowing the team to get opportunities at the fast break. So, um, I mean, I look at the Rockets only have seven fast break points, and for a team that's as young as they are, they that's what they're really good at. So, um, by us not turning the ball over, it allow us to set our defense. And uh, you tweeted earlier this afternoon about uh, just you know expressing frustration the way the last two games were officiated, and you echoed something you told us back in November that refs have been telling you that hey I, I missed it or I didn't see it. Is there a solution you have in mind, or is there something that can be done that can make it better? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't have the answer to it. Um, but it's very very frustrating to be able to, to uh, you know put yourself in a position to win, and then you know you have two calls that could have. Helped you win ball games and back to back games not going your way. So, you know, you know, when you're in a when you're in a win business, you know, um, it can affect a lot of people. It can affect a lot of people's job security, it can affect a lot of things that's going on. And, you know, when you um, have an opportunity, you put yourself in a position to win, you wanna, you know, feel like it's fair. Brown, I think you had back to back baskets in the in the first half where you kinda look to the crowd and Told people that um, you quoted, I think, a Pulp Fiction line that you're a bad, um, <laughs> <laughs> a bad man. Um, when did you feel the rhythm tonight? Um, and have you? It feels like when you've played second nights of back-to-back so far this year, you, you've been able to kind of dial it up pretty quickly. Is, is there anything to that? It's kind of weird because I don't feel it. Um, I was extremely exhausted today, extremely tired. Um, body was sore from the battle that we had yesterday versus Philly. Um, but I guess once I step on the floor, you know, for warm-ups and, you know, and the, the crowd fills in, it's, it's my job to go out and play, you know, you know, the best way I can. And I'm not going to be, obviously I'm not going to be perfect. I'm not going to make every shot, but uh, I just try to lock in on, on the job at hand. And, um, you know, I could have very easily took tonight off, but I don't. I don't feel like it was. I don't feel like the momentum of our our ball club could could use me taking a night off tonight. I don't feel like, um, you know, I wanted to sit on 
uh, that loss with Philly last night. I wanted to kind of get that out of my, my taste buds and see if we can, uh, you know, win a ball game tonight. So, um, you know, it was a complete team effort, and I just try to, you know, make plays. LeBron, uh, aside from not turning the ball over, uh, what, what did you feel like was the, the difference tonight in, in pulling this one out versus the last couple? Um, even when they made, um, you know, they made their runs, uh, we were standos. You know, um, you know, we was up 14 at one point in the third, and you know, they, I think they cut it all the way down to three to start the fourth or something around there, and we was able to, uh, you know, still make enough plays, to still make enough stops, and you know, give ourselves an opportunity to win the ball game. So I feel like um, that was very key. Hey, Bron, um, you've long cited how you take care of your body as being one of the main reasons you've been able to be so good for so long. But I'm curious, has your unique ability to sort of outthink opponents and see things contributed to that as well? And when did you realize that you had that advantage? Um, I knew that very at a very young age that I had the ability to read the game before the game was even being played or possessions or being able to read um, plays ahead of time. Um, so I've always had that ability for, for quite a long time, even when I, you know, I was a teenager. Um, so, you know, I always knew that um, at any part of my game, you know, as far as athleticism uh, will start to go down, that I could still outthink a, a lot of uh, my competition, you know. And then um, as my athleticism, you know, goes down a little bit, I knew I could expand my game. You know, up. So, you know, early on it was, it was a lot of just speed and just jumping and then figuring it out. You know, and you know, as you get smarter and smarter, you say, okay, well, teams now know that they can kind of key in on these things. So, you know, how can I make sure that I, I'm unguardable? You know, and I can always put myself in position where I do what I want to do. You know, not what the defense wants me to do. So, um, you know, I've been able to. Um, continue to work on my craft and also still keep the, the, the mind in it of being able to see plays happen before they happen. Last question, Aaron. LeBron, uh, when he was alive, Dr. King was widely hated uh, for his views and for his activism. It wasn't until he was assassinated that the narrative around him began to change. When you think about your social activism and the critique that you've received, how are you able to relate to Dr. King? No, well, first of all, um, you know, it's a beautiful day that we're able to say, celebrate such a great man and what he stood for and everybody that was around him that stood for him and stood for his views as well. Um, you know, for me, looking at guys like Dr. Martin Luther King, looking at guys like Muhammad Ali, you know, guys that, you know, spoke, um, you know, from their hearts of, of being able to um, understand, you know, what's going on in the world. You know, and being able to use their platforms to be able to shine light on some discrimination things or, you know, on, on views that they believe in, that's for the better of the people, no matter your color, no matter your skin, no matter how tall or short, no matter whatever the case may be, your age. You know, you know, talking about how we can all, you know, be as one, how we all can preach love and not hate, things of that nature. So, you know, growing up in the inner city, you know, seeing, you know, the how underprivileged, black people are, you know, I, ref I always felt like if I had an opportunity to be able to have any type of platform, I always wanted to give back to that. I always wanted to be able to use my voice and the people that grow up like me to be able to understand that we do have power, we do have an opportunity to, you know, make people understand that, you know, there is good in love, you know, and um, I'm not nowhere near sitting up here saying I'm Dr. Martin Luther King or I'm not my I'm, I'm no those guys literally stood on the front line and did it every single day you know but what I I'm honored to do is be able to kind of still live through them and be able to speak some of the words that they preached and also live by action as well you know being able to give back to my community and being able to you know speak for my people and you know the the things that we've been through over you know, many, 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 obviously, years we we know the history, but um, it's definitely um, a, a treat to be able to, you know, perform and do what I love to do on such a great man's day, you know, and uh, Dr. King is uh, one of the greatest men ever walked the face of the earth.